Iglesia Oasis, bendiciones. En este momento vamos a escuchar otra historia de las tantas que hemos descubierto aquí en nuestra Iglesia Oasis. Un miembro más de la familia Oasis que en algún momento de su vida fue impactado por el mensaje que predicamos día tras día aquí en nuestra región y por la cual muchos de nosotros hemos sido alcanzados y bendecidos. Es una historia poderosa. Te invito a que la escuches atentamente y de una vez te doy gracias porque es tu ayuda y colaboración lo que hace posible que vidas como esta sean alcanzadas. Hola, mi nombre es Alondra Hernández. I'm from Orlando, Florida. Um, my parents are originally from Mexico, so I'm Mexican. Um, growing up, uh, my parents, you know, they always worked hard to give us what me and my brother needed. They always wanted the best for us. They always supported us. They always loved us. Siempre jugué afuera. Eso fue antes de, like, electronics. So I knew what it was like to have a good childhood. Y, like, me encantó. I was always happy. Um, nunca tenía, like, I never had anything to complain about. I was always happy. So was my brother. Um, we lived a happy life, I guess you could say. Um, they even put us in a private school, and that was where, you know, we learned our foundation in God. That's where we learned um, to, how to love Him, and, you know, that's where I learned to accept Him. Even though I was little, you know, I, I always wanted, I always knew about God, and I always wanted more of Him, um, even though I didn't know necessarily what that meant, but I knew I wanted more of Him. Y ahí fue donde este, fui aprendiendo de Él y fui este, enamorándome más y más de él y ahí fue donde yo lo acepté como mi salvador. Pero, like, sadly, my dad eventually, when I was in fourth grade, he lost his job, so that made me go to, I had to switch from going to a private school to a public school, and it was kind of hard um, to transition, and I remember that in sixth grade, it was the first time I was ever in a public school, and I used to get bullied, and, you know, my friends who I thought They were my friends. Este, they would pick on me. Me, me llamaban fea. Me decían cosas like they would make fun of my acne. Y cosas así. Y you know, entrando más a uh, like my, mi adolescencia fue un poco más duro también, especialmente en el high school. Pero todavía batallaba mucho con mí misma. Yo tenía un self esteem that was at the bottom. Um, I used to see myself as ugly, as like fat, like every possible thing that a girl could ever think about and especially my senior year of high school. Fue cuando este, yo este, me caí en una depresión like, bien fea. Um, I remember que cada noche, aunque no se veía, yo lloraba cada noche. Mi mami y mi papi nunca se dieron cuenta de eso, pero you know, yo quise esconder eso. And I remember que una noche, cuando estaba en el baño, I had a panic attack. Y esto, like, I was crying so hard, and I didn't know why. But it was like everything that I had for me since I was little, coming out of that private school and being so happy, to you know changing into a different atmosphere, to like the world. Que yo no sabía que you know era malo, you know los malas palabras, las drogas, everything, and it just it hit me. And you know being a teenager and trying to fit into the world, where my mom would teach me to not fit into the world and to be myself and to want to become someone better and an influencer, it was still hard for me. And I remember when I was in high school, my senior year, um, when I came to start applying for colleges, I thought that all these four years would start paying off, that I'd start getting accepted into all the colleges that I'd, you know, I'd want. And I, w I told myself without putting God in there that I was gonna leave home, I was gonna go to Tallahassee or to Tampa, and that I was ready to live my life on my own. You know, my parents, they, They gave me the right morals. They taught me everything that I needed to know to go out into the world. But no fue así. Um, me recuerdo que cuando apliqué a esas escuelas, este, sin orar a Dios, sin preguntarle qué fue sus planes para mí, um, cada, cada universidad me, me negaron. Tomó mucho tiempo, and it got worse from there. Todavía estaba llorando. No, no, nunca era feliz ya. Like, I would come to church, pero no más venía, and I would just assist. Like, you know, you come to church, you listen to the word, and then you go home. And that's it. I see the life continued. And I always had that perspective of myself that I was never pretty, that I was always fat, that I was even dumb after working so hard these last four years of my life, that I would never amount to anything, and that I'd end up going to, like, a community college. And of course, there was nothing bad with that, but I had higher expectations for myself. But 
Um, there came a point in my life when, to when I just hit rock bottom and I told my mom and she told me that I needed to stop making myself a victim and that you know I needed to start looking for God more and I needed to actually put all my faith and trust in Him knowing that there's, there's more to it, that I can't just pray to God, say, oh yes, God, I want this and then expect to get it when you know He has other plans for me. And so I came to the conclusion that I'd like finally do that and I'd put all that within Him. And that happened two weeks before New Year's and I can say like after that my life changed completely. I remember that I was looking for a job right when I turned 18 and no store would hire me and it wasn't until like a week after New Year's that a job called me. I got the job. Um, a month later in February I got accepted into the university I'm now attending and not only that but you know God blessed me and my family to for me to be able to have a full scholarship and I never even thought that I'd get accepted into a college, much less have a, a scholarship. So it was, it was a huge blessing for me. And not only that, but recently I went to a church camp um, que es parte de FMD Youth. Y allí, este una noche, andaban hablando de um, que necesitas buscar más de Dios, que necesitas tener este, ese hambre por Él. Y yo me recuerdo que um, el pastor que andaba predicando esa noche preguntó quién, quién tenía un llamado, quién tenía el llamado del, del pastor. Y yo, yo sé que yo no, lo te, no tenía eso, no, like, no lo sentía en, like, inside of me, pero, you know, God still speaks to you. Y yo me recuerdo que like, mis manos, they started to, like, I felt this huge fire in my hands, and like, I heard a huge voice in me decir que, like, ves tus manos, es, estos manos que ves, you're gonna, you're gonna use them to heal people. Your hands are going to be used to not only heal those physically, but those emotionally and spiritually that, you know, you have a purpose and that you're going to travel and you're going to be misionera and like, you're going to see the world in a different perspective and you're going to change lives. And from then on, I knew that God, like, like, even though it was recently, I knew God has big plans for me and I know he wants more from me. And, you know, with having God in my life now and like actually having full faith and love and trust in him I know that he's made me happy like he's changed me around like now when I smile it comes out of me like it's genuine it's not you know like a facade it's not a mask I genuinely have it I don't go home depressed of course everyone has their bad days and their good days but like I know that God loves me and he loves his children and that he always wants to see us happy so este hoy en día Londra is a happy 18 year old, you know, she's fighting herself, pero también es, se está, you know, she's crazy for God. She wants to know more of Him. Y, and I know I have a purpose. Ella tiene, yo tengo una propósito y sé que, um, que ya pronto Dios, He's not done with my testimony. I could say that God is still working in me and He's working in my life and in the lives of others. I don't have a lot of family here. So para mí, Oasis is like, es mi familia. Y like, yo siempre me siento en casa aquí, especialmente con los pastores, pastor y pastora. Whenever I see them now, you know, pastor, he always gives me este, palabras de aliento. Siempre me dice, you know, yo te veo un, como una doctora. Like, you're going to be a doctor one day. I, I see big things with you. Y pastora siempre me da un abrazo, me da un beso. Like, she tells me that she loves me. Oasis, no solamente los exhorto a dar um, para, por su bendición, sino también para la bendición de la iglesia y sus hijos. When you put all your faith and trust again in God, He will supply for you. And you know, not only is giving to Oasis a blessing, they're also blessing other people's lives to keep the church open. I don't know where I'd be without this church because Oasis is my life, you know? Qué historia tan fascinante y poderosa. Y esto es gracias a tu colaboración, que semana tras semana nos ayudas y auspicias cada uno de nuestros ministerios. Gracias por ayudar a nuestra iglesia y por ser parte de Oasis Alcanzando una Vida a la Vez.